In this tutorial, we will learn how to manipulate data in R. Manipulating data is a really important skill to learn how to, to perform within R or any type of data management software. The reason is, is that sometimes we need to reformat our data from what we call wide to long or long to wide in order to work more easily or at all within certain types of analyses or data visualizations. And so we'll learn more about what this wide to long format looks like once we read in some data as an example. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to open a new R script file. And so we'll do file, new file, R script. And let's go ahead and do a save as to the R script so we can save it as, I'm gonna save it as something called test, save, and I'll override the existing one. So this is gonna be all about manipulating data in R. And so first we need to set our working directory because this is where the data file we're gonna be working with today is located. It's, we're gonna specify the folder where it lives. And so we'll use the setwd function and in quotation marks, it's in my H drive, our workshop folder. And specifically you can see this if you go, it is called um, manipulating data is the name of the file here. So here we have it, it's the CSV version here. So comma separated values, so it's manipulating data. So I'm gonna copy that exact name here. But anyway, I need to set my working directory to tell R that that folder I just referenced is my R workshop folder in the H drive. So let's click run. And now let's read in the data. So if you haven't already, and you're using the reader function, uh, the, uh, the reader package and specifically the read underscore CSV function from that reader package to read in your data. If you haven't already, make sure that you install that package or if you haven't updated it recently, install it to uh, update it. And so it's just install that packages and then reader. I don't need to do that. I just installed this very recently, but I am gonna use the library function to make sure that I have it ready to use so I can use the function from within the reader package to, to read in the data. So next to this line of script here, I'm gonna click run. So everything seems to check out there. And I'm going to read in data, the data file. I need to name it something as a data frame object so we can work with it in additional functions. I'm gonna call it data M for data manipulation. It's the name of the data frame object. Use a left hand arrow symbol notation in order to name it. And I'll use that read underscore CSV function from the reader package. And the name of the exact name of that data file was manipulating data. I just pasted it there because I'd previously copied it. And don't forget to put your .csv extension there within the quotation marks and after the name of the data file. So let's click run on that line of script to run it. Okay, so we've read in the data. Now let's take a look at it so I can give you a better orientation about what we're looking at here. Okay, so we have these five variables here, survey ID, so this is survey data. And then we have, let's say, four different variables here that looks like they've already been, or let's just say these are items, that there was a one, this is not a very well-designed scale, but employees had a one to a hundred scale and they had to indicate using a slider the extent to which they were satisfied, they wanted to leave or turn over from their organization, that they're committed to the organization, they're involved in their job and so forth, okay? So each row represents a unique survey or a unique employee's responses to the survey. Okay, so currently this is in what we would call wide format, okay? So there's more variables, and but there is a way that we can convert this to long format, meaning that we reduce the number of variables, but in, and what we're gonna have instead is a now we'll replace, we'll have a survey ID column, but then the next column will be a column that has just the items. So it would be job for each person, job satisfaction, turnover intentions, org commitment, job involvement. And so instead of each person having, each survey having one row, it would have four rows potentially. And then we would have a third column that will have the scores, okay? So this would be long format. Again, the reason for doing this is that sometimes this is important for doing certain types of analyses or data visualization, okay? All right, so let's start off by doing a wide to long. So we're currently in wide format here. So let's do a wide to long manipulation. And so to, to do this, we're gonna use, and if you haven't used this package before, you'll need to install it. If you haven't used it recently, I recommend updating it. We're gonna use a package from the 
tidyverse that's called tidyr. So the reader package is also from the tidyverse as is dplyr and it's tidyr, all lowercase. And so if you haven't, install that now. And I'm gonna use the library function to access it, okay? And if you have any questions about setting your working directory, reading in anything like this or installing packages, check out some of the previous tutorials on these topics. Okay, so I'm gonna click run here to access that. Now, it could be, and recently I ran into this error, that you might get an error that says something about the rlang package as well as the glue package. And so it might be that if you run into this issue, you would have to, if error, try installing using this install.packages function here, um, the rlang and glue packages. Um, alternatively, or just the tidyverse package might suffice. So just this will collect everything that you probably need to work in the tidyverse. And so you could try this, just installing this as well. Okay, but that's only if you run into an error. All right, so the other thing that I want to show you is that currently our variable names are as follows. We just saw this visually in terms of looking at this manually here, but let's just use the names function from base R, the name of our data frame that we read in and as the sole argument, run this, and you'll see here are variable names. Just remember those, tuck those away, and how many rows of data we have. Okay, so in row is the, the function from base R. Data M is the name of the data frame object. Let's click run. So in this case, this means we have 20 unique surveys where each survey has its own row. So how will we go from wide to long format? Well, we're gonna use what's called the gather function from the tidier package. And so that the way that this is going to work is that we need to create a new data frame here. We don't need to, but I think it's good to specify we're creating a long data frame. So I'm just gonna create a new data frame or say that we wanna create a new data frame called data M underscore long for long format. And then we're gonna use the left-handed arrow here to name it. And so, but remember our original data frame is data M. And because tidy R is part of the tidyverse, universe of packages, we can, and it's built in part on Magritter, which allows you to pipe. We're going to pipe our data frame object into the gather function. So we'll do percentage greater than percentage to serve as our pipe. This is our pipe here. So we're piping this data frame into the gather function. Okay. And so the first argument in the gather function, and I'll actually do a return here to um, just free up some space and to make this, so we're gonna start on a new line, but see, we do have the closing parenthesis here, so uh, we're all good. We can do this across multiple lines. So the first argument is we need to say key, set our key equal to. So this is gonna specify the name of the new variable that is gonna be the column with the categories. So if you remember, we're trying to make this long, so we want a new variable and we're gonna call it, as I specify here, items because we want there to be a column that's items that will just have a list of job satisfaction, turnover, intentions, org commitment, job involvement as names for each survey, okay? So that's the first argument. Is where you could, this is what you need to change here. You can call this whatever you want. I'm calling it items here because I'm calling them survey items. Okay, so the next argument is value equals. And so this is what you're gonna name what is going to be the third column here, which will be the actual quantitative values that we see here. And so I'm gonna call these scores. These are item scores in other words, okay? All right, so you can see we have the closing parenthesis here. So if you wanna run this, we can run it all like this at once. And, um, and actually I forgot, there's one more line that we need here. And so our third argument is actually a series of arguments. And this is the names of those variables we wish to essentially stack or create into long form. And so everything else won't be. Um, put into this new items column here, okay? So we want job satisfaction, turnover intentions, or commitment, job involvement. So we want those exact names. So we're just gonna list those here. Probably the easiest way is to copy these and paste them so we get them exactly right. So job satisfaction, turnover intentions, or commitment. And the last one is job involvement, okay? All right, so now we're done here.
Okay, so if we run these five lines of script here, it might be more, a fewer lines for you. You could have done this all in one line, but it would have been really, really long probably. Okay, so now we can click run. And you will see we have a new data frame object called data m underscore long, which is what we expected because that's what we created here. Let's click on it to take a look. And so now you see exactly what I was describing. We have now three variables, the survey ID stays there, but now we have an items variable and a scores uh, variable here. And so this might not look like much. You're like, what? What is this right here? Well, watch what happens if we sort here by survey ID. Now we see, okay, this is survey one, which is presumably completed by one person. And so we see that survey one now has four rows, one for job set, one for turnover intentions, one for org commitment, one for job involvement, and here are the scores. And you can scroll all the way through. And so what has this done to the size of our data frame or the length of our data frame? Well, let's use the names data and data m underscore long to look at the names of our variables. Okay, as we just saw, we see survey ID, items, scores. So the variable names have changed from above now that we've gone to long format. And then the next thing is let's use that in row function again and do for the data m long data frame. And we see 80 rows. So we've gone from 20 rows to 80 rows. And this is because now everybody has, so actually here's the old data frame here. So now instead of everybody, this being wide, it's now long. So we've stacked the data in this way, okay? All right, so what if you wanna go back to from long to wide again. So we want to go back to the original way the data were. Sometimes you'll get the data in long format and you need to make them in wide format for certain types of analyses, for instance. And so to do so, we're going to create a new data frame or say that we want to create a new data frame. We're going to call it data m underscore wide. And we'll use the left hand arrow to name that. And then we're going to take that data m underscore long data frame that we just created a second ago. And we are going to pipe it using the pipe notation to a function from tidyr called spread, okay? And I'm gonna hit enter here so we can go down a line of script. And so we can spread, we can literally spread this out across lines here. And so this is going to be relatively simple. All we need to do is say, we're gonna use that key argument and specify, okay, which variable in our long data frame represents the key here. So this is gonna say which ones we need to spread out or make wide again, okay? So it's gonna take everything that has a unique value here, job satisfaction, turnovers, com or commitment, so forth, and make unique columns or variables out of it, okay? So key equals items. And then the next thing, we'll use that value again, that value argument, and we need to specify, okay, what are the values equal to? So this is where it's that score. If we look back at the data M long, it's the scores variable here. So this is gonna tell R and specifically this function where those values are gonna come from that are going to populate these new columns we're creating as we go wide again, okay? So this is essentially how you specify the, um, the long to wide and spread notation here. Okay, so let's go ahead and highlight that and click run. And you should see that now we have a new wide format data frame. So let's click here. Look at that. We're back to where we started essentially. And we can verify this by using the names function and data m underscore wide for this new wide format data frame. Okay, these names look familiar to us. Now let's use the in row function and data m underscore wide as the argument to see how many rows of data we have here. We have 20, so we went from 80 back to 20. So we're back to where we started. So here's our original data frame. Then we went long, then we went back wide here, okay? So that's just a brief exposure to how we manipulate data, but the spread and the gather functions in the tidier package are really outstanding, and it's really the way to go when it comes to for reformatting your data from wide to long or long to wide. Thank you very much.